Good evening. We have a quorum. Seven o'clock. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. Um, we have nobody signed up for general information tonight, so we will just get on with a few of our general information items we have. The, we received from the Office of the Attorney General, well, the town clerk did, and the Attorney General approved Articles 20 and 21 from the last annual town meeting of May 3rd. I believe 21 was the zoning article. 20, I think, was the uh, nuisance bylaw. And Article 18 was approved. That is the one that provided for some uh, dog licensing fees and stuff like that with a few minor changes. Um, basically, the, in, a, in a nutshell, the town had in there that uh, no fees shall be charged for dogs with, under the American Disabilities Act, <clears throat> provided one of the following is presented a doctor's prescription, a doctor's letter, an office letterhead, or from a service animal training program, or a photo ID that says the service animal is shown as such. And there's a whole a few other things. And under the state, uh, General Law Chapter 40, well, Chapter 140, Section 139, it says that uh, nothing of that is required. So they're going to obviously uh, delete that part of the article that part of the bylaw, and you'd have to talk to the town clerk or the town um, administrator to find out exactly what that means, because I'm just reading from the letter, so I don't want to get into that, okay? <laughs> um, we did get from, uh, we, can come, we can take up this one, we did get a request, I believe this is for the building inspector, to amend, um, it's from the uh, town administrator, yeah. I believe. Well, I think Tim put it out, but he said this, this letter from oh, from David Nixon to Tim. So I'm assuming Tim was the one who requested, but I'm not sure. To amend um, subsection 19.3 of the zoning bylaw, section 19, that requires the roof design to have a uh, all roofs shall be pitched, minimum pitch. Okay. To, by deleting the section and entirely, we want to delete. That section 19.3 and replace it with the following words all roofs shall be pitched minimum pitch shall be three inch vertical rise per 12 inch horizontal run no roof line shall exceed 75 feet continuous one run without a break change in elevation or intercepting roof line prohibited roof, roof appearances are flat roof appearance and roofs with less than three inch vertical rise per 12 inch horizontal run and the present bylaw, I believe, also requires that they have a um, shingle, appearance. shingle appearance. And so they're deleting the word shingle appearance. And so we'll put that on the annual, the, the uh, special town meeting. And the town meeting shall make a choice. Let's see. We also re received from Leslie. Pride sent a letter to Tim Neidhart and Frank's, uh, Mike Spank and Abel um, on the new nuisance bylaw regarding the old, I think it's the Getty station, wasn't it? Getty. That was on the triangle piece in front of the new Pride Getty. station. Getty. Yeah. And uh, they're saying that it, com it complies with the new um, uh, nuisance blight bylaw in that it is both a nuisance and a blight. It's overgrown. The building is falling down, falling apart. It's, uh, um, if anybody drives, has driven by there, they can see, you know, there's grass growing all over the place and weeds and grass, trees and whatever else. The uh, canopy evidently is not in the best of condition and the building itself has got all kinds of graffiti on it. So they're asking the building inspector and the, and the uh, fire chief to enforce the new nuisance bylaw. That's just for us and our information. So, um, so we do have a few minutes. Um, this was in the uh, Gazette this week, this past week. In the cartoon section, um, 
basically shows two snails talking, looking at a uh, third snail. Oh great, we've gone our whole lives not knowing what a cupola is, and now suddenly we can't live without one. <laughs> so uh, that uh, reminded me of our late uh, patriot, John Devine, who um, it was known up and down the length of Route 9 for uh, the cupolas that he inspired. So um, I wanted to thank John for coming back to remind us of that little piece. <laughs> Uh, do you want to take up one of like the non-controversial? I think that will be non-controversial. Oh yeah, you got on, on the uh, should the planning board consider sponsoring an article for the fall town meeting to extend the moratorium on adult use marijuana? Um, well, since you're the one that's suggesting it, so you... based on the progress we made or didn't make at the last meeting regarding adult use marijuana and all of the variables. The, the model we were working from called for uh, basically uh, all growth operations to be within a building. And we asked them to expand it to allow for field growth, um, if provided by the uh, regulations. We did get some feedback today, which I forwarded around to everyone. Um, I am just concerned that we are not making fast enough progress on the adult use marijuana bylaw to be ready for early October. So that's why I thought maybe we could discuss whether we wanted to extend the moratorium, or propose extending the moratorium, have that be the article for October. Can we extend it is the question. I believe we can, based on some of uh, what Larry Smith was telling us. The Attorney General has been approving longer extensions because the State Cannabis Control Commission was taking so long to roll out their regulations. Okay. Um, so I believe we can. Uh, I did talk to David Nixon about whether it's something the Select Board can do on its own initiative or whether it has to go to town meeting. And he is supposed to be looking into that. I would think we have to go to town. I would think so too, because it is a zoning bylaw. We got that correspondence today from Larry, didn't we? We got some correspondence. Yeah, it was from Susan. Larry's retired. Right. Yeah, it was just uh, those were some answers to specific questions, yeah. um, and it wasn't the text of the rewritten bylaw. Um, so I just want to uh, I want to roll it out there. Uh, there's a possibility I won't be attending the next meeting, which is when we would be taking it up next. So um, I suppose we don't have to decide anything, but uh, well, we we have to decide pretty quick because the special town meeting is middle of October, right? Could it right. Be? What's the date? Of October 18th. October 18th. So that's. The third Tuesday, we would have to post by October fourth. Right? We would have to post by October fourth. Okay. So October fourth is really the drop dead deadline. Yeah, for you. Yeah, we have to have the whole the public meeting, and it takes almost a month ahead of time to get everything ready. So we would need to have that posted by the third Tuesday of September. Jim, is the state all finalized with this marijuana stuff? Still so, that. well, we could get the article ready to post and just pull the trigger at the last minute if we had to. When would be a reasonable timetable to postpone it to wait for the spring? I would say the spring town meeting. The annual That's meeting. Kick okay. it out six months. And, uh, okay. Yeah. What's the date? So, uh, if you wish to postpone the uh, adult use marijuana zoning bylaw because you need the extra time, that's fine. Um, there is the MS4 zoning bylaw requirement coming up in the spring. So, it's just in terms of workflow, uh, you'll be tackling that in the springtime. So, you don't want, to, don't want to give you too much work to do. Yeah, well, I would think the adult use marijuana may only take one or two more meetings, that one or two more months to final that, but I don't think it'll be ready for October. <clears throat> but it probably would be ready by the end of the year, which still give us, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing by the end of the year we'd have the marijuana all straightened out, and then we could still have 
four and four months plus to get the uh, MS4 because the MS4 is kind of for MS4 is sort of a cookbook across the state. There's not something unu I mean unusual town to town on that. Right. There's a cookie cutter approach to that, but there are significant penalties for not having it in place by uh, the beginning of the next fiscal year. Okay. Okay, so that would be probably middle of May or something. End of May we could make that one. Right. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I don't think we're going to need a lot more time on the medical marijuana, but we just didn't get to it and until the recreational, you know, recreational marijuana. We didn't, just didn't get to it until two weeks ago because of everything else we've been working on. Okay. Yeah, I think it just needs a little more time. Okay. Okay. I'm in favor of that. Make a motion for that. Yeah, I'll make a motion to uh, to ex uh, put an article to extend the moratorium to, to uh, I guess we'll call it June 1. Okay. Second. Motion and second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Anything else? Close enough. We'll reopen the public hearing on the uh, library and senior center. Right. Attorney Reedy. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I'm Tom Reedy. Can, can I just get one clarification before we start? Are you representing Tom, the library or the senior center? I the senior center. The senior center. Okay. Yes. So, so that's it. So, so this is just the senior center we're talking about now. Well, my understanding is that this is for the entire site, and so similar to what you've done, I think 220 Russell Street is probably an example of it, where you approve the infrastructure for the entirety of the site. So, the parking, the drainage, stormwater, uh, etc. And then um, I think what we've got is a pretty well-baked senior center plan, elevations, floor plan, et cetera, that we're seeking approval on. But the library, I believe, would need to come back once they finalize their elevations, materials, et cetera, uh, at one of your, hopefully, public meetings for approval. That, that was my understanding of the process. The arguments you're making, though, are on behalf of the senior center and not on behalf of the library. Oh, I think I would disagree. I think my arguments are on behalf of the site. Even though you're representing, not representing the library. I think uh, what's good for the goose is good for the gander, and so representing the site and looking to get approval for the site. Um, well, so with that, probably a great segue into what was provided to you. So at the last hearing at the end of last month, July 31st, what we heard was get independent counsel to give an opinion on the Dover Amendment. And so what we did is uh, we reached out to um, Ruth Silman, a managing partner of Nixon Peabody, who um, suggested that I talk to Art Krieger, who's managing, uh, he's a co-founder and a partner at Anderson Krieger in Boston, um, founded it in 1986, uh, Columbia University <coughs> Law School and University of Pennsylvania undergrad uh, Dover Amendment experience, and uh, reached out to him provided him with the information that is provided in the letter, and he drafted an independent letter uh, for the board. Uh, I don't know if you've had the opportunity to review. I'm happy to comment on it. It is not my work, but I'm sure we can have a discussion. Uh, the results of it, I think, are to suggest uh, pretty clearly that the library is protected under the Dover Amendment. It is an educational use. And our suggestion is that the 35 parking spaces that are being provided for the library are reasonable, uh, and as a result, the site parking is reasonable, and therefore the board hopefully will uh, find it uh, okay to approve this evening. All right, you want a discussion on that? Uh, <laughs> I'm happy to so discuss if you'd like to discuss. In many cases, the big print giveth, the fine print take it away. Under the Dover Amendment, granted, perhaps it is educational in use. In the letter we got from our town council, however, it does not, like I said at the last meeting, 
acknowledge that it's a get out of free charge. The planning board and the site plan approval special permit still has the authority to regulate setback, frontage, height of building, bulk of building, parking. So the crux here, for me at least, is do we go against our bylaw, which requires a two for one parking, or do we say that the Dover Amendment gives them carte blanche? I don't think it gives a carte blanche because that caveat that Joel Bard gave us said we still have the authority to do regulate this, 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 and this. And the reasonableness comes into yes. play. Yes. And I read through Kent versus Doug Out and all the other ones, and they all say reasonableness. Absolutely. What is reasonable to you may not be reasonable to me. And what we have to rely on is two thirds of the town meeting vote that acknowledge that they thought parking was a reasonable situation in a two for one. If, however, we do say, well, forget it, it's the town, we can just look the other way and use the Dover Amendment as cover. The next person that comes in is going to ask for some kind of uh, cover in that way too. So can we, in good conscience, allow the Dover Amendment, even though we have the ability to regulate, not to apply to this particular situation, yet apply to all other situations. And I submit that as the town, we must be held to a high standard, not a low standard. So that's, that's my dilemma. Sure, sure. And I, and I think, if I may, I think you're entirely right that you do have the ability to regulate it. But what the Dover Amendment really provides is that that regulation needs to be reasonable. And I can understand that under your bylaw, you were suggesting that reasonableness may mean this two to one uh, parking uh, square footage ratio. I will, as I did at the last meeting again, just um, mention the first full sentence that any building hereafter constructed or modified, altered or expanded for limited business, business or industrial use. And then that, though, that is the context in which we are but discussing you know, this two to one that parking context ratio. Of means the zones, those it, it, zones. It doesn't mean... With all due respect, it says use and not zoning district. I, I, I well, am confident well, that... Well, that's, uh, that's a difference of opinion. The, the intent of that was to build with the district, not the use. That's correct. That's... Tom, you say that this, is, this guy says it's primarily education. Sure. You, you don't want to use start playing English language major here because we'll nail you on a lot of letters that we've well, we, we got we got, a, we, got a, we got a memo here from the uh, superintendent of schools in Hadley sure. that clearly demonstrates that there's no real significant educational purpose to this library. I mean, really nothing. There's no relationship to the Hadley schools. They have a couple field trips. Uh, there's a summer reading program. Uh, they may try to uh, have the high school students have an artwork display at the library. There's nothing, there's no educational purpose here. It's a recreational library. It's a recreational library. As a matter of fact, I talked to a former librarian, I'll confess. I talked to a former librarian in town. And she was kind of upset about what was going on here. And she said, Mike, this is not an educational library, it's a recreational library. So I just stole that from her. What 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 we what the librarian said, Mike, this is a recreational library. It's not an educational library. So and Tom, the reason, excuse me, go ahead. Tom, uh, just to put this in context, how many spaces are we talking about? That's a good question. Right? So and I think um, what we've got on the site now, as far as the square footage is about, I think, 44,000 square feet of what this board would consider parking under your calculations. Based upon the size of the buildings, what we would be required to have is about 49,000 square feet. So it's a difference of about 5,000 square feet. Looking at uh, the number of parking spaces that we have, because under your bylaw, you know you've got the two to one uh, square footage ratio, but not necessarily an identified uh, square footage for the parking area. Under TDR, there is one where you give some calculation of 200 square feet uh, for every parking space. However, in listening to the board and the interpretation of what that two to one 
parking ratio includes, it does not just include that finite parking space, it includes you know, the drive aisles beyond it. So what I've done is taken a look at the number of parking spaces here and said, okay, for 44,000 some odd square feet, we have 105 parking spaces. So a little over 400 square feet, 420 or some odd square feet per space. Extrapolating that gets us about, we would need 12 more spaces in order to comply with the 49,000 square feet. So it seems like, Mr. Dwyer, that's what we're talking about here. Well, I certainly want to make a comment on this. You, all this what you're talking about is fine and dandy, but what about the building they vacate? Where is the future parking for that? Where is the parking that so-called the Suckman negotiated with the Legion to share on that? How many parking spots is that? 50, 75? Can you find them anywhere on this stretch of land? So I don't, I don't think so. And I don't know how germane the existing library is to this conversation that we're having or the Legion. It's very germane because you, you are causing a white elephant there. And the town doesn't need another one. Okay, um, I'll respectfully disagree, and I'll also suggest that across across Russell Street, I think the select board is actively investigating uh, providing additional parking spaces uh, across the street. When I see it, I'll believe it. Until then, it's not there. But parking across the street doesn't make sense for a senior citizen. You're not going to have 70, 80, and 90-year-old people and children walking across Route 9. It, That's not... And that That's wasn't not smart. No, and that wasn't the intent to suggest that it is parking for the senior center. It was simply a response uh, to Mr. Michkowski suggesting that what are we going to do with uh, the the parking for the existing library? I think that is just a total unsafe proposal. Okay, it's just like the senior center can't be built on this end because it's safer on that end to this day. I don't know what the hell is safe. What makes it so safe down there and not safe here? You know, you guys just want to talk about things that help you guys. I want to talk about the whole project and what's, after the smoke clears, what is left for this town to deal with from sure. here on sure. forth? Sure, and I don't think, we haven't shied away from that conversation at all. What we're looking to do is to comply with zoning bylaws that we don't think should be applied to at least one of these uses here, strictly. The two to one parking ratio, I think in the abstract or in, in concept, let's say you have a warehouse that there needs to be two to one parking. You know, I don't know that that's the best way to regulate this land. And so what we're looking to do is to provide reasonable parking, to get back to Mr. Zagrodnik's point. I know we don't have a, a crystal ball in front of us, but you know, three, four, five years. We're talking 30, 40, 50, 60 years in the future. What's going to happen? We don't have any place to put anything. And I don't know 30, that anything 40, would. 50 years, I don't know that anything would ever get. Them. But I don't know if anything would ever get built if we designed everything for 30, 40, well, or 50 years into the future. We can plan ahead because people know how to plan ahead. <laughs> Certainly, then, but then and, you and, become and somewhat and paralyzed and in and the. Sure, and there's options in the town. I think that would solve this problem. There's going to have to be, as you put it, some flexibility. What we've got here now are two Siamese twins. Please, no, we don't want to. Okay. That that is an inappropriate comment to be used in this planning board meeting. That is what's very, inappropriate about it. That could be very well deemed offensive to somebody. So I, I think a lot of this goes to the design. And uh, now I'll be the first to say that I don't think the design is an optimum design, uh, but it's the design that's presented to us. And we've always taken the position that we don't design things for you. <clears throat> so we are going to have to resolve this on the basis of the design that is before us. And um, as long as that design satisfies the bylaw, our options are limited. Um, we certainly may, may incorporate some, uh, some dissenting or concurring opinions in the decision, but I think we do have to just proceed on the basis of what's before us. 
and um, either voted up or voted down on zoning basis. Uh, I think the, you know, Mike, everything you say is perfectly reasonable looking forward 10, sure. 20, yeah. 30 years, but, but that's not our job. But what is before us could also be withdrawn from us, right, from deliberation? I don't see why it would be, but sure, anything could be withdrawn. Because we come up with a solution, because we want the senior center to be built, and we want the library to be built. If this was a straight-up library vote, trust me, it would be 5-1. Five 5-1, one. Five one, no Dover Amendment, 5-1. Because you've got this new Dover Amendment problem introduced, you got a problem. Well, that was my whole drift when I made the comment. I'm not. I'm not seeing the Dover Amendment as a problem. It's it's a workaround for a <laughs> deficit of 12 parking spaces on the entire site. So uh, 12 parking. It, it's a way to let this go forward without going through the exercise of getting another variance, which the ZBA would probably give them. Mm -hmm. It would have probably been a better plan to have sought a parking variance from the outset. Uh, but here we are. So, um, now I'm, I'm not troubled. I have read uh, Mr. Krieger's letter, I've read his resume. Uh, he is as well versed in application of the Dover Amendment as any attorney. Any attorney giving an opinion on the Dover Amendment is either someone who has been representing a developer who is trying to use it, or someone who has been representing a municipality that is trying to uh, resist it. So, um, you know, there, that, that goes with it. But, I, you know, it's, it's a well-written letter. He uh, does say that we are warranted in applying the Dover Amendment to excuse the small deficit in parking spaces that the library site would have. That leaves the senior center in full compliance. Uh, I'm okay with that. Well, I'm not. The, is, uh, is the, uh, uh, let, let's move on to just a, for a short period. What happened with the uh, easement? Do you have, the, do you have either, uh, either an, uh, an agreed upon easement or an alternate plan? We, we do. Um, I'm not exactly sure about where it will be, but we do have an alternate plan that shows uh, utilizing the existing right of way uh, to access that site. Do we see it? Do you have it? So there you'll see that the entrance has been moved over probably 20 feet, 30 feet from where it was originally proposed. Where's, In the, pro where's the property lines? Uh, it'll be on <clears throat> the so that westerly side. Go to the the left-hand side of that vehicular path, if you go about six feet to the left, that's the property line, just the coach's property. So you would have approximately a six-foot buffer of lawn area. You, you'd be in that 30-foot existing right of way, and that would be the fire department's path to get to the... So is there a written agreement filed with the Registry of Deeds that verifies this? That is the right of way. So you're, you are <coughs> no, not, not the right of way. You're moving it. No, that's no, the, no, the right no, of way. No, no, that is the existing right of way. This layout in front of you. 30 feet. Correct. correct. This layout in front of you is along the 30 foot right of way. You, you didn't move it over. Mm -hmm. No, not in this layout. The original plan was to move it over. You are it correct. It was there. The original plan, that, yes. That's what we submitted. And so this is the alternative plan as uh, we had discussed at the last year. That's 24, 24 foot width drive. What's that? That line is 24 feet on the top? Correct. Okay. So when you when we left the last hearing and you guys said you know come come back with an option B we coordinated with the fire department and it was understood that there's no way we could do this senior center without having a center point of that second point of access to the site. So because um, when, when we left the last hearing, we were wondering if we could make. We never, we never said we never said you did. No, I'm not saying right. you did. No, what I said is when we coordinated with the fire chief after we left last who, year. Who said you need a second point of access? When we coordinated with the fire chief, the fire chief indicated to us he, he didn't think it was in the town's best interest to not have a second point oh, of access okay. to this. You have, you have two interests. No, nope. uh, Middle one. Street. 
Well, there's an entrance and exit. Well, fire truck can go down and exit, um, and it's um, not going to be people parking there, so there are two entrances, so this oh. doesn't seem quite... We didn't say that. In you, the you are correct. You did not so say it's the the fire chief correct. that's saying that, so he really request. has three entrances. He has an entrance on yes. Middle Street and an entrance off the Route 9. Two entrances off Middle Street. Correct. Mm -hmm. Where are you putting the... Where that building sits, you're taking up all the upper parking lot from the Legion. Where are you providing parking for them? I don't have the answer to that. I have not been privy to any of the discussions with the Legion. Now that is your right of way. Right. The town has a right of way through there, and that's where the Legion has parking. Right. So, does that, we, that that's up for the attorneys to decide if you have the right of way, the right to take away their parking. Or look at inversely, do they have the right to park on the town's right of way? Well, they own the property. Correct, but they can't frustrate the intent or purpose of that. Uh, they are technically the servient estate in this scenario where the town is the dominant estate able to utilize that strip of land to pass and repass. I'm, I'm just saying it's, uh, up, yes, it's up, up for the attorneys, attorneys to, to, to this point. Sure. Yes, yeah. I'm not trying to <laughs> disagree with anything you're saying or agree. Understood. I'm just making a statement. Understood, yes. Because I have no claim and I don't want to get into that. Tom, right. uh, yes. Doing your math, you're 5,000 square feet short on parking. Correct. 200 square feet, 200 square feet for a parking space times 12 is 2,400. 2, Correct. That's a, that's a long way from 5,000 square feet. I agree. So when you say 12, I think you're being a little short-sighted in your number. And I would disagree. Um, I don't know that besides in the TDR, which allows a developer in a, in a certain district to have a 1.5 to 1 parking ratio, it's in that section where uh, the town has said a parking space is 200 square feet. Everywhere else, and based on what we had heard over at Hopkins Academy and in the planning board's interpretation of what counts towards that square footage, um, what you have here is, you know, let's take the southerly parking area and drive aisle. That entirety is what is considered parking in order to satisfy the two to one ratio. And so what I had done with my math is you don't look at each of those parking spaces and said it's 10 by 20. That's not the way that the town has well, I, looked to identify. I know, but. So I took an average on this site with the number of parking we actually provide and the number of spaces. And so following that out to the next step, that's where I get the 400 per square foot. So that's parking plus the drive aisle behind it to allow for maneuverability. And that's where it comes up with the 12 parking spaces. But just from the uh, design that was presented, you would have to have the parking. It would be more than 12 spaces. So it seems like you're giving us this short number, 5,000 square feet. That's a lot of land. <clears throat> I mean, I, I, I agree with you, Joe, but it's not that much. If you basically, basically the way the bylaw is written, it kind of comes out to be two parking spaces for every square foot of dry bio. So it's actually about 16 square feet that should be short, not 12. But that's not, it's not a huge number. If you use a two-thirds two -third ratio. Okay. Maybe everybody's going to be riding around with foreign, foreign cars. So the crux from, from our point of view, from a planning board perspective, is can we ignore section 5.4.2 says, however, we do not have the authority to waive the two for one requirement. Uh, well, sure. That's what the Dover Amendment does. Well, state law supersedes the zoning bylaw. No, well, the Dover Amendment, you read Part B, what our town council said, we have the ability to regulate. And when I was confronted with this many years ago, Elizabeth Barato, who was our town council, who eventually became uh, 
a member of the SJC, so she was a heavyweight. And I said, what do you mean when you say regulate? You can regulate, but you cannot prohibit. She said, the fact that you can't make water run uphill, in effect, you would be regulating to the extent you would be prohibiting. But parking is in that, I think it's in that agreement that we do have that authority above and beyond the Dover Amendment, which is not, it gives us some authority to regulate parking. And, and there is no disagreement that you okay. have the right to regulate. But we would suggest that you have you have to be reasonable in that regulation. So you, you can't unreasonably regulate it. And I think what the courts have found is if that regulation is tantamount to a prohibition, which in this case it would be, if you say we've gone to the MBLC, they say the number of parking spaces you have is satisfactory. They, they, they some law uh, judge may say that. I mean, that's. And we would suggest that we've provided objective authority to suggest to the board that the uh, one space per 400 square feet is reasonable. And we are saying we can meet that. We can actually do a little bit better than that. And if you come back and say, no, you have to abide by our bylaw, that is an unreasonable regulation, which is essentially the same as just prohibiting this use. And well, that's, that's, not our, over see, that's not our problem. It's, it's the the size of the site and the building. Uh, right. So I find myself in a moral dilemma too. We're supposed to uphold the bylaws when we get sworn in, you know, you you have to acknowledge that you're going to agree with the bylaw. And the Dover Amendment does say we have that ability to regulate. And two thirds of the town meeting said this two for one parking is a reasonable parking. So uh, uh, enough said on that. Those were the only two outstanding articles, correct? The uh, emergency access and the parking, correct? And the Legion parking. Well, then the Legion has not come to any kind of an agreement yet. We have not seen anything well, in writing. They've been to talk about it. Oh, they don't know. Then how are we going to vote for something you don't know? We can vote on something contingent no, upon. No, no. You know, yes, we you, can vote on it. You can do it. I'm you not. don't have to support it, but yeah, we right. certainly can vote on it on a contingent yeah. basis. We yes. do it. Right. We've done okay. it. So we have the okay. We've got the emergency access. I wouldn't say it's addressed, but at least we have an option, and it's in the hands of whatever to be. Correct. Um, so it really is, it comes down to the parking issue. Um, any other comments, anybody in the audience? Hearing none, seeing none. I would, yes. Come to the microphone, please. Can I stand up here and talk? Yes, microphone, please. State your name and that's it. Lynn Edwards, Hawk Metal Drive. You're not in the microphone. Just move it down a little bit. That's it. Lynn Edwards, Fox Meadow Drive. This is a wonderful town, and you're to the a microphone, wonderful. To the microphone, speak to the mic, please. This is a wonderful town, and you're a wonderful board. My wife and you're wouldn't trying say. really hard to protect us. Excuse me. I'm making a joke, sorry. Speak to the mic, please. Okay. I apologize. And you're trying really hard to protect us, and that's wonderful because that's why you're here. But it would seem to me that what you're debating is whether a library is an educational institution or not. What is in a library? There's books and resource material. Children have to be, go there whether they want to or not to do research for their homework. Right. What else do you see that, that purpose for that library? You had a very good education. I've had a good education. I had to go to the library several times to do exactly. research. I'm sure you must have too. And it's not related to the schools. My own grandchildren have gone there and, and done research. It's available to anybody in the town. And that's wonderful. What a blessing to have a library. What a blessing. We can all go there and get materials and grow. I really think you'd be making a huge mistake if you didn't allow this library in here with the however many parking spots we've got. Because right now we have, what, five over there for the whole town? The town wants this. Yes, they want you to uphold the zoning laws. But they want the senior center. And they want the library. And we have shown you over and over again People that are much more infirm than I am came out on rainy nights and, and with projected thunderstorms to tell you that they wanted the senior center and they want the library. 
Give this to us. We want it and we want you. And we want you to continue to protect us. But please represent our interests because I really think we've made them clear. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Dwyer, I recommend the motion. <clears throat> Let's see. Maybe it would be easier if I did the stormwater management permit first. Sure. Or could I just have a moment with my clients before you go to a vote? Sure. If you don't mind. Do we have anything else to discuss? Why did we do the stormwater management first? You don't have to. Okay. I will do the uh, site plan approval first. I don't realize how much you spent. Uh, do we have anything else after this? Um, a couple of. Uh, oh, John, sorry. John's idea. Okay. We have no bills. We will discuss John's article after this. Do you know what the bill is? No, they haven't responded to that question. I expect. They don't have to return my calls. Oh, do we want to uh, just. Give an opinion on that hotel issue. So what? Uh, well, while we're in the recess here, okay. On a delay. So this is uh, this is on Spruce Hill. Spruce Hill. Okay. Yeah. And they want to demolish the existing structure and put up a new franchise, I think, for Marion. And the question was, they have to meet a certain size target. And they can't fit within the um, 7,500 foot footprint for the village center overlay. 12,500. Um, I'm not quite sure of the math here. Tim was dropped it into my hands on his way. I guess the total footprint would be 16, Whoa. two. But they could put it in two buildings connected by a walkway. That's what they did on, uh, they did a similar thing on uh, Ultra Valley. They put, they put the conference center and they connected it up. Yeah. Well, over on the uh, Ultra so, uh, uh, right. the so the building inspector says that in, according to the building code, this does qualify as two separate buildings on one site because they have exterior walls. Um, and I guess Tim was just looking for some guidance from us as to whether we would consider a, an open air or even an enclosed walkway between two separate buildings to be a link. I certainly wouldn't because you got the, the elements of the snow. No, this would, be, this would be enclosed. Well, this Dang, this might there. be, I, I'm not sure what, exactly what oh, the link would be, way. but this is going to be two separate, two separate buildings with exterior rated walls on all sides of both buildings. How many stories? Um, didn't, he, didn't he show it? First floor, second floor, third floor. I think it has three floors now. No, wasn't this the one they were in between? It was short. It was short, and because of the zone. And but then you change that at that town meeting. Remember, he went right. That was in the aquifer. Right. That's right. We made it because he made it even. That's right. Because the original aquifer only referred right. to the north end of town. When we made it the expanded Callahan, we had a conflict between the two, and we made it all the same. That's right. That's right. Whatever. Do you, you have a problem with that? I don't have. I don't know. Do you? You know those motels they bring an awful lot of tax money to the town and no hindrance on school or anything. The chance of ever getting a mall to do this or a I mean, it, 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 it's a lot different because they well of course nobody builds malls anymore either. Right. <laughs> the, 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 the 
ones that are around are struggling. So, two buildings connected by a walkway, whether or not it's enclosed, as long as these are structurally separate. Correct. You know, okay. I, I, I would actually prefer that thing so it would be less dangerous, like in the winter, in the ice and snow. That's if they wanted to do it. Okay, well, I don't think we have to vote on it. Okay. Is, Tim just wants sort of a, a consensus of the board. I think for the record, I'd like to make a motion that we allow that. I, I don't want to make a motion. I would not vote for a motion on the basis of this drawing. Right. I, I mean, this but, but a consensus that you're, you're okay with it, Mike? Yes, I am. John? John? I am, but it, you're right, that drawing is a yeah, thumbnail sketch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The motion on this drawing wouldn't be good. But, but the general, general concept is okay. Yeah. Okay, you got a right to see, can he give it to you? He gave it to me, he gives it to John, so okay. either way. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anything else? Red Sox are cooled off for two days. Yeah. When they get rain down. No, they lost two games in a row, but I mean, they can't win everything. But still, 20 games that haven't been anybody else lost. The best one was that Yankee game, the fourth inning in home week, right? I never seen nothing like that. They blessed them. <laughs> Attorney Reedy. Yes, um, thank you very much for that time. I guess what we would like is if we could get a, a straw vote before you go to close that public hearing, if you wouldn't mind. I think I know where Mr. Michkowski stands on the issue, but I... I How do you know? Um, I'll tell you right now, if it was just the library, I'd vote in a heartbeat. Okay. Thank, thank you. Man. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. I agree with my colleague, Dr. Zagrani. Because we're spending taxpayer dollars, this project has to be held to the highest standards of the bylaw. And two to one is the higher standard, is that okay? Yes, sir. Okay. I think the town here better. We can have a great senior center, a great library, but not on this site. This is a claustrophobic site, and it's a claustrophobic war's nightmare. So what would be the purpose of the straw vote? Would there be a concession coming if you saw that it was not going to pass? Well, I mean, I think you know the alternatives that we're facing. Right? If, if we go forward for a vote tonight, it sounds like we're not going to get a supermajority, is what I've heard. And so there's a denial. If there's a denial, there's a set of things that begins to happen. The select board is meeting tomorrow evening. They may want to consider all of the alternatives um, so that they're comfortable with whatever that next step may be if there is, in fact, a no vote. Or, alternatively, if there's something on site that we can do in order to satisfy the two-to-one parking ratio. I don't know that what Mr. Sarzinski just said, if that would satisfy him, I, I think, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it sounds like it would satisfy you if we were able to meet a two-to-one parking ratio. So far, Tom, there's been very little flexibility on the client side. Understood. And I think that if they stick around for the rest of the meeting. So, so far, there's been very little, sorry about that. So far, there's been very little flexibility on Tom's client side, which is fine, but I think you know, if you stick around for the rest of the meeting, there's going to be a proposal on the table that we're going to talk about that's going to solve this problem. And you're not going to be able to put a shovel in the ground this month or next month, but a shovel will be put in the ground if, if, if this comes to fruition. And it's going to work for the town at present, 10 years, 40 years, next 100 years. I guess uh, one of the options by, by its very nature is that if we do vote and do not have a supermajority, uh, the motion fails, and the only option, the only functional option, uh, never mind considering the options, the only functional option is to file an appeal in court by the town versus the planning board. And uh, that will become the Full Employment Act of 2018 for the legal community. And I don't think that anybody is served by that route. Um, I'm seeing a very, you know, relatively, yes, the parking is tight depending on the standard we apply. 
And I know that this project was sold on the uh, if we build it, they will come basis, but um, I'm, I'm not sure that we're really uh, bruising the ego of town meeting by um, agreeing that the, to let the parking dip a little under the two for one via the mechanism of the Dover Amendment or if you were to go get a variance because uh, you'd have to demonstrate to the ZBA why you do not need the, the demonstrated parking. Um, as I've said several times, I'm, I'm not happy with this, but within the constraint of the jurisdiction of the planning board, uh, I would make a motion to approve it with a few comments along the way. <clears throat> but whether that motion would carry or not, I have no way of telling at the moment. I have no certainty. Um, would so the, the concession that you were talking about is the projected suit and the fact that it could go on for years? Or No, I don't think that was the concession I was talking about. I think it's taking a... I think it's understanding that as a reality if we get the vote that I'm reading that we're going to get and what that actually means publicly uh, for the town, for these projects, uh, for the grant money for the library, etc. Um, and I think that's, you know, once you make a vote, there has to be some action. And so at this last stage, trying to listen to what the planning board is saying. Now, we're trying to think if there is anything that we can do in order to satisfy what we're hearing. And understanding that Mr. Dwyer is not going to be here at the next meeting, but wondering if the, the board would schedule some interim meeting so that we could have all five members, uh, maybe even a short term, because I, the select board's meeting tomorrow evening. If they look and they say there's nothing we can do, this is the plan, which is the plan, which is the plan, we're back in next week, we're getting the vote, and then you know, the chips fall where they may. Um, but I, I would ask for at least that to give us, let us see if there's, based on everything, because it's going to cost the town, whether it's a, a redesign, if it's um, a lawsuit, there's a cost. And I think before there's a, any finality to it from the board, we would just ask for that one last opportunity to, to take a look. And if the board would entertain having a, a hearing next week, I don't anticipate it being very long. Um, I think it'll be either a, here's what we can do, or um, sorry, this is the plan you've got, and then dealing with the repercussions. Uh, I'm sorry, Tom, I've already filled in the date on the motion. <laughs> okay, what date is that? <laughs> I would echo Mr. Dwyer's comment to sentiments that uh, I think this project could have gone a whole lot better. Um, I think it's a lesson for the town of Hadley that from now on when we vote for something we need a more complete plan when we vote at town meeting and not something like trust us we're going to do this this way um this plan wasn't complete until really a short few months ago and we voted on it two years ago or close to it and to me there's something that says the town people not the committees the town people themselves voted for a white elephant they didn't know what they were voting for and it's all showing right now with this that we have in front of us that there's a lot of things that are barely making it um, whereas it could have been done better well it can still excuse me it can still be done better okay we just have to take the, take the reins and make it make it well, done well, better. This, this thing can't succeed but the, 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 the issue I'm saying right now is my opinion I'll echo, echo Mr. Dwyer. It meets zoning um, based on a Dover Amendment. But do I like the design? Is it a good design? The answer to those are no. Um, but it does meet zoning, and we're not designers. And if it meets the zoning amendment, the zoning bylaw, then my opinion is we are obligated to vote for it. <laughs> so, yeah, Mike, it, I don't see it's our job to take the reins. Uh, well, there's a vacuum here, I think. But that's well, that, I, I, that, I appreciate your opinion. That may or may not be the case, yeah. but that's not our job. Gotcha. Uh, there are gotcha. other boards you could run for if you want to take the reins. It sounds like you belong to a union, so <coughs> but I'll, I'll just tell you one thing. 
this project is the stupidest one I have ever seen come down the pike in this town. I've seen a lot of projects, a lot of good projects that happen. This thing was done by a special interest group, by a petition. The select board just sat there and let it fly through instead of saying, hold on, let's get more information, let's get more input. Other communities that do community projects, they involve every single department in that community, uh, community with their input. That was never done here. Everything was hurry up and wait. Hurry up, bang, haste makes waste. This is a picture perfect of it right here. I would, I would be glad to vote for this. If it was tied in, the selectmen sent out requests for proposals to buy new land. The uh, municipal building committee voted to support it. The committee on the building committee of the senior center in their February 1st meeting said we can't bother with this because it's going to push this project on for two years. There was two properties to the north that responded to the request for information and request for proposal. Two of them. It took almost five months for the administrator to respond back to the two applicants. What, it, how many no, town meetings passed? Kowski, he never responded back at all, okay? I have got no response back by that. Are you one of the landowners? Yes, right now. Okay. <clears throat> this to me, for the future of this town, is sitting here with Mr. Vakua's property and Mr. Bai's property. And everybody seems to be looking the other way. We could have a nice senior center there. We could have a little park there for the elderly people. We could have a lot of things. But let's build this now, right now. So, you know, hey, not by my vote. Not by my vote. I would support you guys 100% if you went out and bought this. And I, I even offered at one time to help you folks. And I would have helped you, but you said everything is all set. You made mistakes after mistakes after mistakes. I'm not saying you're bad people, but you didn't, you didn't understand what you were getting involved. I was in construction all my life. I was in other building committees, and I have never, ever seen the likes of what this is being presented. So this, you know, the library come in, if they come in our next meeting to reconsider, I certainly would reconsider and vote for them so they don't lose their grant. Let them build, let them push the building back for future parking for Witchcott, and let's try to get that other land for the town of Hadley and build a senior center that this whole community can really be proud of. Mr. Zagrande. What, is he still looking for a straw vote? Or still <laughs> yes. No, no, no. No, no, no still looking for a straw vote. You, 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 well, I, don't, I, I think we're probably functionally giving him a strong straw vote by stating our, making our comments. Yes. Yeah. I mean, certainly I echo the fact that this was poorly planned and almost disingenuous when it was presented to the town meeting. Having said that, I cannot see the town boards arguing and going to court for a year. And Bill put it a lot better than, than my father put it when he said two farmers are arguing over who owns a cow. One farmer's pulling from the head, the other farmer's pulling from the tail. Meanwhile, the lawyers are milking the cow. I think this is... I just hate to see it go to this protracted legal settlement for the town, so I would probably vote in favor of it reluctantly. Okay, so what, what's your wish, Mr. Reedy? Uh, can we get a, a short continuation? Would that work for the board? Uh, let the select board chew on everything that they've heard this evening and not make next some sort week. of decision. Well, not next week, no, that's the order week after. Okay, so this is the 21st. 
20, week of the 27th is not a good week. Wait a minute. When is the library plan is complete? Find that out first. You schedule a meeting, you come back, you're still incomplete. When will the, when Find will out what, what they're going to do with the, the Legion Park and, parking lot. Are the library plans complete? The full plans won't be done until early fall, end of September, early October. Okay. Okay, well we, we've certainly approved pad sites yep. before, yep. so that's not a problem. Right, okay. But you've got the basic appearance is, is pretty much up. Is the, is the interiors you're working on and stuff right. like that the layout? Okay. The mechanical actual design. Oh, that, yeah, that, we don't need that. Right. Okay. So the, the, the appearance that you've shown us and the footprint is what you will build? Yes, right now. Yes. Okay. I get a question. Yes. What is your drop dead day? of shovel in the ground for the library. Yeah, the end of... It was two years after the signing of the agreement. Right, end so of 2019. The end of it? Yeah. You By signed that agreement January 25th of 2017. So that doesn't give you to the end. It goes by the fiscal year. So we have the end of 2019. Yeah. Yeah. What, 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 what's the end of the fiscal year mean? June 30th, 2019. Okay. I did call Boston on that, and they gave me a date of January 26th of 2019. No, January 26th, 2020. Well, that's what they gave me from Boston. I wrote that down. Are you sure on that? Positive? I certainly don't want to be the one to jeopardize the library grant, you know, because for one thing, I don't want this as another white elephant for the town, because this is a big white elephant. Okay. So, Bill will be out on the 4th, which is the next meeting. With the next, the next planning board meeting. Can I just ask one question, Mr. Vakula? Is your offer to the town still out there? Uh, don't don't put them on a spot yeah. like that. No, do not answer that. Well, do not I, answer that. Why not? Well, we, we're, that, that, we're, we're not negotiating. This we're not negotiating. That, 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 that puts Mr. Vakula on a spot. That would be unfair to Mr. Vakula. Yeah. Okay. Okay. His offer to sell is still valid to the town. The price is irrelevant. Correct. That's good. That's good enough I answer. Ask, I didn't ask him about the price. No, he didn't. Oh, we're not asking for price, but the offer to sell is still available. Uh, well, we are in negotiations with someone right now. So okay. If, if that falls through, maybe. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. That's all I can say. That's that's fine. Okay. Um, week of the September 10th would be the first available week. Anybody not available the week of, uh, what would be September 11th? 9-11? Yeah. Uh, would be the day. That's a good day. Wow. What happened on 9-11? Wow. If, if anybody not available? I'm available. I'm available. Okay. I'm available. I have, I put a date of 9-11 for our next meeting right here. Perfect. Thank you very much. And I'll put that at 7 with no business meeting. Right. right. That's hey, right. what about us lawyering up, too? They all lawyered up, so I'll keep the party going. Okay. All right. All right. We have to change for that Thank meeting, too. Thank you very much. Okay. We're not done yet, Mr. <laughs> Mike. Oh, okay. We we'll like to scratch. You scratch. can't scratch. Oh, okay. All right. Mr. Mikowski, you had your idea. Did the planning board uh, consider sponsoring an article for the fall town meeting to purchase the Vakua and buy properties? That would be one. That, that would be complete, and then another article just to buy the back property. I think it would be a great idea to at least give the town the option to say yes or yeah. no. Then that's if it's still available. Available, right? 
Yeah, obviously. I mean, is that an individual proposal on your part, or are you asking no, the planning board? No, the planning board to sponsor planning. one. Now, what would, what would be your, I don't think we should money the waters even more. Money? No. Are you kidding me? Money? I mean, I, they can't get any muddier than they are now. It's we. That's the selectman's job. They did. Not they ours. tried it, but they didn't follow it through. Somebody has to. I, I, at least. At least let the people in this town either vote yay or nay. Not everybody second guess who's going to vote and who's not. If the people vote no, then we got to do what we got to do after that. If they vote yes, it's a dynamite move for the town. So the senior center gets built on that property with proper landscaping. The way it is now, you don't have a place to put a maple tree. The, uh, how, how would we? My only question is, the idea to buy it, but I mean, we're going to have a dollar value to it, right? Well, well, two, it's, exactly. two. it's it's what the market is on it. What's what's the market uh, price on that? Well, I can't. You can't no, 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 you can't no, say. No, you can't. After, I'll let you know if something happens. If it goes well, the other way, I'll you're, you're going to. Uh, yeah, but what I mean, I think it was up to five I'm, I'm in favor of sponsoring the article, but we've got to know. We've got to have some kind of a proper wording and, and monetary dollar figure to go with it, I'm assuming. Okay. Yeah. How do we get that? Who, who's going to do that? I don't know. They got it. They got it advertised. Jim, right? I'm out. I'm kind of not in favor of it. That's not our job. I'll keep everything. That's the trouble. Everybody said that before. Look at the mess we are. It's not our job. It's not our job. Who the heck's job is it? I'll, I'll repeat, I think it's the select board's job to do things like that. Well, if we start doing other people's jobs we could no ask, authority to do it. We could ask them to do it, can't we? We could ask the select board to do it. Right. I would support a motion to ask the select right. board to propose a purchase of the property and let them right. decide. Two articles, one for the entirety and one just for the back property. Because there will definitely be two different figures. Well, yeah, we would be purchasing it, obviously. Right. Okay, so do you want to make a motion to recommend that the select board put an article on to purchase the Right, that we submit a request to them that they would do that on behalf of the town of Hadley. They did all the paperwork already. I mean, they sent out the request for proposals, they got response to it, and that's all they got to do is update it. Find the price there. And I mean, they they can get an appraiser later if it passes. If not, they don't. It's not necessary to get an appraiser and make an offer. I think you, I think we have to vote a dollar amount, but I that's part of the reason why I don't want to be trying to craft a motion like this because right. we don't do it. I think that that's on the market for, if it's entirety for five mil. I think that's what it, what, the, what that price was with the. The, the broker. Okay, so would this be your motion to request select board to put two articles on fall town meeting? One to purchase the Vakula Buy property in its entirety, in its entirety right. and second to purchase the easterly portion of the property. Right, the back line. Yeah. Without the houses. Yeah. <coughs> Farmland. Not houses. Right. So that that's okay for your motion? Yes. Okay, I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion on that motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. For the select board. Just be so that will be coming to you. Okay. Do you want that in writing? Uh, yes. Okay. I will, I will try to write that little portion out. Okay. Okay. Do we have anything else? I have nothing else. Motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Meeting is history. Thank you and thank you, John.